We've got a broody hen. No, it's not Temmie here. Uh, when we first moved... <laughs> That's the broody hen. <laughs> Mom, Mama's hungry. <laughs> so that's a broody hen. Uh, she comes out about once a day for about 30 minutes for a little break, usually making a ruckus like that, asking for food. So we're going to take her over, take you guys over to the container and uh, get her a little food. Come on, Tebby. Come on, bird. So while Blueberry's eating, I'm gonna take you over to her nest box and we're gonna show you her eggs. We're on day 16 right now, and uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why we are raising them the way we are and uh, what we're going to do about it. So let's go over and check her eggs. So when we moved to our off-grid property, we took with us five silver gray dorkings, four hens and one rooster, and we took with us our Cochin. Now the Cochin uh, we brought with us because one, she's cute and fluffy, and two, she's supposed to be a really good broody mama. And what we want to do here is we want our chickens to be able to raise their own young. So we brought her with us, and sure enough, two weeks ago, we started seeing uh, signs that our Cochin was going broody, which is a good thing. Some of the signs are that she starts making this pterodactyl-like noise. Uh, another thing is she starts sitting in the nest box a lot longer. And then the uh, other sign is that she starts pulling out chest feathers and lining the nest with it. So as we saw that, we gave her eight eggs uh, and uh, we just kind of let her sit in there and she's been sitting on them ever since. She comes out once a day for about a half an hour. We make sure that we give her some food, make sure she has water, and then she goes back in and starts sitting on those eggs again. Um, we are on, I believe, day 16 right now, so she's due this week to have her chicks. Now, if you guys are letting a broody hen raise young, there are two ways to allow your broody hen to raise their own young. The first way is where you let her raise them with the rest of the flock. And then the other way is where you pull her in the eggs and you put her in a separate uh, broody box or broody area. And there are pros and cons to doing both. Um, the benefit of uh, leaving her with the rest of the flock is that she's less stressed. She's more likely to sit on those eggs. She feels more comfortable being with the rest of the flock. Um, the downside of letting her sit with the rest of the flock is number one, um, when she gets off that nest to go eat, there is a very high chance that another hen can come in and lay an egg in her nest box. And that has happened just about every single day. Or another one will just squeeze in right with her while she's sitting there and lay an egg and then she'll tuck it underneath her, which is a bad thing because that ends up being half incubated eggs and we don't want that to happen. Um, the other thing is when you let her raise them with the rest of the flock is once they are born, there's a high chance that the other chickens will not accept the chicks and they will kill them. The benefit of moving to a broody box is that the chances of the other flock killing those eggs or some other chicken laying are virtually none because they're not exposed to the other the rest of the flock. The downside is is if you decide to move that broody hen to a broody box while she's still while she just started sitting, uh, there's a very high chance that she will be stressed out and she will not sit on those eggs for you. So the approach that we took is we allowed our broody hen to stay with the flock. But uh, what we are going to do is once those eggs hatch, we're gonna move her and the chicks to a broody box where she will be separated from the rest of the flock, but in the same area. So they will be, they'll, they'll still be exposed, but uh, they will not, the older chickens will not have access to the chicks to harm them. So let me just show you what she's sitting on here. So here's her nest. And you can tell there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine eggs in here. Now, one of these is new. We only gave her eight eggs to sit on. And the way you can tell is when we gave her these eggs, we marked each one with a marker, just a little mark, just to note that those are the ones that we gave her. And this one looks a little lighter. And sure enough, it does not have a mark on it. So this is the one, the rogue egg that some other chicken laid in her nest. And this is what we're going to pull today. So we check her nest box every single day when she comes out, uh, just to make sure that uh, we don't have any 
half incubated eggs and we pull these and these are perfectly edible to eat because they're not um, incubated. They've been just laid within the last 24 hours. Uh, so we're gonna pull these and just let her continue to sit on the ones that we marked. Right now we're gonna head on over to Jeremy where he is going to build us a broody box for when these guys do hatch. Hey mama. Hey fluff butt. Hey butterball. cranky. <laughs> Broody mamas are very cranky and hungry. I just gave her some raisins as a treat and she's looking for more. Yeah, you don't like being touched down, do you? <laughs> This is Temmie. You might remember her from our old flock, our original flock from a couple years ago. We got her back. She was Alaria's favorite. She is the most spoiled chicken I've ever seen. It's pretty much our house chicken. If you follow us on Instagram, there's pictures on there of her just coming in the house, hopping on the couch and being like, where's my food? Temmie. Why are you so spoiled? Hmm? You want your wings rubbed. You like it rubbed under there, don't you? Yeah, pretty wings. Okay, so we're gonna try. No. Okay, so we're going to build basically a little miniature chicken tractor like a foot and a half high by maybe two feet wide by however long this pallet is which I think is nine foot two inches. Uh, basically it's going to look like a Toblerone, that Swiss chocolate yumminess that's in a shape of a triangle. I'm going to build it using triangles because they're really strong, pretty simple, and uh, so we'll basically make a, I guess like maybe a foot and a half by foot and a half deck, kind of a little box that you can get to, to get eggs out of, and a little door, and then all the rest will be like a little run with hardware cloth. So, Broody Mama can hatch out her chicks, or once they're hatched out, we'll move them all in here so she can keep them warm in here, and then she can bring them out into the grassy run area, and peck, and scratch, and do all that stuff, and they'll have their food and water. And they'll be completely secured and um, isolated from the rest of the flock until she lays an egg again, which means she's no longer broody. Uh, and then we'll take her out and leave the chicks in there to grow up. Um, and grow them out that way. At least that's the plan. So first we're going to build a Toblerone. Get out of here, no treats. Every time this door opens, they all come into the container for sunflower seeds. Zip these nails off, break down this pallet.
you're not helping. I got the platform done. This is the nine foot, two inch runners from the pallet, spaced two feet apart. We have a two foot by two foot floor deck uh, for the little house part. And now we're gonna build um, an acute triangle. Probably make one, two, three, four acute triangles. So it'll be two feet, two feet, two feet. All the legs are the same length and the interior angle is 60 degrees in each corner. I do hear them. <laughs> Looking for babies. Oh, I see it! It's adorable! Oh my goodness! I hear a little baby. Mama clucking to her. Oh Telling her, don't fall out of the nest. Look at the baby. Is there only one? She's trying to tuck her underneath her. Shove her under. Can they even breathe under there? Yeah. Sounds like there's two. Oh, there's one. <laughs> Good job, Mama. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's the other one. Look, oh, she's pecking at her. Telling her to get under. Look at it. Don't see the other Hello. All right, it's day 23. We had 100% hatch rate. All eight of our babies hatched out. And uh, we moved Mama over to this um, little broody cage that Jeremy kind of cobbled together. We've had a run of really crappy weather. As you can tell, we got some snow, um, a couple inches of snow that's, that's quickly melting off. We had a lot of rain. And uh, we kind of got this together just in time to move her into it. And uh, everything's working out good. So let's show you the babies. just came out and started feeding them. And we put this tarp over it because of the snow. We wanted to try and keep her dry. They're following her around to keep warm. Because it's not that warm out. We're going to get them closed up. So this is her little house part up here. She's in the run right now feeding her babies, but this is where the nest is. I'll show you what that looks like. That's her high little nest area. So while we wanted our broody hen to raise, our, raise her chicks with the rest of the flock, we felt that uh, because she was nesting on the second story nest box that we needed to move her to a separate area where we could provide her with uh, chick starter food and where she could not have to worry about the babies falling out of the nest, which did happen uh, at one point. We had to pick babies up because they were falling off that second story nest box um, while she was hatching out the rest of the eggs. So we did move her to this and that's why we wanted to have her in a separate area. So we are keeping an eye on her, uh, just making sure she's doing what broody mamas are supposed to do. And so far she's been an excellent mama and uh, we'll just keep you posted. If you guys like this kind of stuff, like, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. What was that about?